We have gathered together to continue to seek for the face of God. We thank God for the gift of life. We thank him for keeping us alive to see the end of today. We thank him for also almost coming to the end of the month of October, um, August as we continue to pray for his protection in the month of September. We pray for all those who have requested for our prayers. We pray for the sick. We pray in this mass in a special way for Lucy Karaoke, Mary, and even George Maritime, and all those who are sick in need of God's mercy. We pray in this Mass also for pardon and forgiveness to God in any way we have fallen short of his glory. We pray that he may have mercy on us and grant us the grace to celebrate this sacred mystery. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good evening, my dear friends in Christ. We are celebrating the Mass of Monday in the 22nd week in ordinary time. On what we are, yet God has given us this great opportunity to participate in this sacred mystery. I therefore invite us to examine our conscience, ask God for pardon and forgiveness in any way we have sinned, that we may be worthy to celebrate this sacred mystery. You are sent to heal the contrite of hearts, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. You seated at the right hand of God the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. God of mind, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and rests with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The Lord comes to judge the earth. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. 
for the Lord is great and highly to be praised, to be feared above all gods, for the gods of the nations are not. It was the Lord who made the heavens. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. Then will all the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice. He will govern the peoples with his truth. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and he went to the synagogue. As was his custom on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. He opened the book and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable years of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, hear yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here also in your own country. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, when there came a great famine over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and put him out of the city and led him to the brook 
of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down headlong, but passing through the midst of them, he went away. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a saying that the worst enemy of a man are the members of his household. The members of your household are those who know you very well and most often they capitalize on your weaknesses. Even when you have outgrown your shortcomings, they find it difficult to forget it and let go. These are the people that will always pull your faith back. The people you are living with. When they have seen you as a sinner, and uh, after some time you make an effort to repent, they don't believe in your repentance. So there is nothing you will do to convince them that John you know before is no longer the same John you are seeing. Every time you stand up to say something, they remind you of your past. You only need the courage to keep on moving. If you are not strong enough, they will pull you down. So, the people, the Nazareans, Nazareans, find it difficult to believe in Jesus. No matter how much he tried to convince them, at every moment in his encounter with them, the first question they will ask, is this not Joseph's son? You know what that question means? We know this man. We know his father, a son of a carpenter. What is he trying to tell us? Over familiarity breeds content. And they never believe in him. Even when the person standing before them is no longer son of a Joseph, but the Messiah, they did not believe in him. And Jesus told them today, this is why people find it difficult to receive miracle. I don't know how many of us that still believe, probably because we have the opportunity to receive the blessed sacrament every day. How many of us have that sense of reverence that I receive the body of Christ? How many of us believe that through this consecration that will happen in the next few minutes, the bread we have bought from the Immaculate community is no longer the same, especially when you have seen when it is being prepared. How many of us believe that by the words of consecration, especially at that period of epiclepsy, where the priest says that this may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? How many of us believe to make it worse, if it is a priest you have condemned and you feel that this priest is a sinner and you are holier than him, you feel that what he is doing is nonsense. You don't even believe him. You are here, but your conscience is telling you that it's not true. You judge what he is doing by his physical appearance, by his sinfulness. It is even better if the person doing the consecration is not a priest, you know. If he has come from outside, you don't know him. You may believe a little. But if it is somebody you know, you see him every day, you know his way of life, you will hardly believe him. And that is why we find it difficult or it is hard for us to receive the blessings that come from the Eucharist. It's a bit difficult. I have said this several times 
that the efficacy of the Holy Eucharist has nothing to do with the righteousness of the priest. It has nothing to do with Father Ernest's holiness that this bread and wine we turn to the body and blood of Christ has nothing to do with my holiness. Whether I am holy or not, by the power of my ordination, that is what's manifest here. It has nothing to do with my holiness. I know we are human beings, sometimes there is that tendency for us to have some doubt. And Jesus told his people, doubtless, don't doubt. Don't start questioning, is this not the son of Joseph? Believe in what you have heard, that this scripture is refuted today. I know as human beings, sometimes we struggle a lot with our faith. I pray God to help our own belief. The man that brought his son in the Gospel of Mark to Jesus and said to him, your disciples could not heal him. Jesus asked him, do you believe that I can do this? He said, yes, I believe. Help my own belief, Lord. Sometimes we believe, but we need to ask God to help our own belief. May God open the eyes of our hearts to see the privilege we have to be partakers of the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ. The Lord be with you. Pray, my dear friends in Christ, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessings of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks father most holy through your beloved son jesus christ your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our savior and redeemer incarnate by the holy spirit and born of the virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to bear the bones of death and manifest their resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending time your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took the bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. The first we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember all your church spirits throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, David Kama, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy, Lord, on us, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and other saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, he may merit to be called to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, and who is saying to us this evening, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May we offer to one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy all of us who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, may the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Prayer before communion. Oh my God, I firmly believe that you are truly present in the Holy Eucharist. I confess that I am a poor sinner and I am not worthy to receive you. But you just say a word and I shall be healed and then I can receive you into my soul. I am sorry for all my sins because they have offended you and I resolve never to commit them again. Have mercy and forgive me, Lord. I desire to receive you with my whole heart. Come into my poor soul and make my heart your abode. Amen.
body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, run through my veins. Water flowing from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me not be separated from you. From the evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of death, call me. And bid me to come to you, that with your saints I may praise you for all eternity. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of gold. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stay us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth proclaiming Christ by your life, for the Mass is ended. You have a blessed evening. Oh